Well, welcome everybody to the Bodyboarding News Network. And breaking news right now is we are sitting with Tristan Roberts, who is currently in Johannesburg, South Africa, on his way back home from being stuck in Portugal for a couple of months. And he now is in quarantine. Tristan, I hope you are well. Thank you for your time, my man. Man, tell us a yeah, little bit about the roller coaster. No worries. I've got plenty of time to give you here, bro, in my room. Um, I've been here for like three days and I think I about have about six left. So it is what it is. But um, yeah, I went through a pretty crazy travel to get just to Johannesburg. Um, flew out of Portugal to Frankfurt after booking a flight and not actually knowing if I'm on the flight. And then I uh, got to Frankfurt. They told me I'm not on the flight. Um, put me on the list put me in a hotel with me and a bunch. There was like, I thought I was the only one. So I was pretty stressed about it. I got there, there was 60 of us without tickets. So I was <laughs> like, holy shit. Okay. Well now, now the airline's probably going to make a plan. So put 60 of us into the hotel. Um, yeah. Like later on that day, we found out that the flight that was meant to leave didn't leave because the door broke. So all those guys came to join us at the hotel. At least um, we had a good time laughing about it and uh, having a beer or two in the, on the promenade there in Germany, which was pretty sick. Um, so, yeah, the South Africans were full of gears and it was a good time. And then um, the next day we got put on a flight with uh, KLM to Amsterdam and then flew from Amsterdam to Johannesburg. And, um, yeah, still some people stuck in Frankfurt. So I'm, I'm pretty ha happy I'm not one of those guys. How come and, I was um, stuck in um, Frankfurt? What was the reason? Weren't they supposed um, to be on the same flight as you? Yeah, bro, but they still they still had problems with those doors. Um, so they couldn't accommodate for everyone. And then not everyone could fly through, um, through Amsterdam because not everyone had a Schengen visa. So they would get stuck in customs and couldn't get onto the, the flight. So SA is trying to make a different plan for them and they're just still there. So. Just have to see. I hope I hope they get out of there soon, man. It's really stressful being stuck there, not knowing how you're going to get home. Um, a, lot, a lot of lack of communication between the clients and the airline too. So it's just really stressful. People there spending their own money. Um, some I've heard of some crazy stories where guys are planning on going for a 10-day holiday and they got stuck for three months, bro. What? So imagine that's crazy. That's just insane. How imagine you, imagine the expenses. You, like you you yeah. you budget for a ten day holiday and now you're there for three months. It's like it's pretty crazy. So um yeah, I was I was meant to leave on the first of first of May. No, the first of March I was meant to leave. And I uh, only ended up leaving the twelfth of June. So yeah, I was there, I was there for <laughs> For quite a quite an extra I think about two months basically yeah, but um, yeah it was good. I got waves. I was able to surf in Portugal. Um, had really good times. I was sort of trying to delay the process too because I was trying to avoid this whole quarantine and uh, you know just not too sure. You couldn't really find out too much information about what those flights were like. Um, so it was just all a big mess. And I was trying to see if the borders were just open again and I could just get on my original ticket that I booked with Emirates. Um, but yeah, it just got too long and I was just thought maybe I'd end up being stuck there till September or something. So I just booked this flight and got out of there. All right. So you booked this flight. You did not get a, a, a ticket or a flight receipt saying, hey, cool, we've got your money. <laughs> yeah. um, here's your ticket. You're flying this day. And then, then you flew to Frankfurt but without knowing that your flight has been canceled. Yeah, exactly. I, I didn't know for two, I paid like two weeks before the time because um, I was waiting for confirmation from the South African embassy who they first have to identify you as a South African citizen. They put you through the system and register you for the flight. Um, and then you pay and then you hope you get on the flight. So you pay without knowing that you're actually on the flight. And then um, I just heard nothing from them for two weeks, just stressing like, man, I don't know how I'm going to get that money back. Try to call everyone, like just no communication. Um, so I was like, stuff it. I'm just going to fly to Frankfurt and try and find someone that works for the airline there and speak to them face to face because there was no other way I could actually get hold of them. Um, 
which I'm happy I did because otherwise I would still be in Portugal, you know. So uh, out of so yeah, frustration that or frustration and desperation that you flew to Frankfurt just to go and speak to someone. Yeah, exactly. I was like, I'm flying out of there and I've paid for that flight, so they have to give me a ticket at some point, you know. It's just like it's that's just simple business. You pay for a product and you receive it, you know. Um, so that was that was my whole argument. So I just flew there and I was just there with a bunch of angry South Africans that were ready to explode oh. that airport if we never got onto that flight. So yeah, it was yeah, it was good, man. It was it was crazy experience. Um and yeah, one that I'll definitely never forget. <laughs> yeah, so tell me quickly a little bit about when you got into the flight, what sort of COVID um, regulations do you have now on the flight? How, what type of precautions did they give you guys or did you have to go through to get into South Africa? And then what happened as soon as you got off the plane in Johannesburg? Yeah, Bruce, so it, that's another thing I was like, I wasn't sure if they were going to allow us to sit next to each other or if they were going to have to separate us, you know, to keep our distance. But I think in in their case, that flight was so full that they were going to try and put as many people on that as possible, you know. But then my KLM flight was really empty because I, it was just a lack of like communication because there was definitely space on that flight for another hundred people. Never mind the other forty five that are still stuck there, you know. So it was basically we just came back with an empty plane. Um, yeah, just wearing your masks at all times, like not allowed to take it off, only when you eat. Um, and yeah, they just come around giving people sanitizer all the time. And yeah, that was it, man. But the plane was really empty. And it was just pretty sickening to know that all those people are still stuck there, like spending their own money when um, they could have been on the same flight as us. That's crazy. That's crazy. So when you touch ground back home here in South Africa, Joburg, what yeah. was it like then? What was the turn of events then? At what time did you yeah, get so, in this country? Yeah, so we landed at 2 a.m. in Johannesburg and it was freezing, bro. It was like minus two degrees, like ice cold. Um, we got off the plane, like got straight into this bus. There was police everywhere, like all around us. It made it seem like we were prisoners. Um, got into this bus um they put all our luggage on police escorted us through johannesburg to santon um like crazy man just so many lights so many cop cars just going through all these red robots like you know just the the whole works and we got here um got to the hotel like sprayed us down um yeah sprayed all our bags disinfected it and then um yeah, then we got put into rooms. They like explained the whole procedure, saying we're not allowed to leave our rooms for the next seven days until the nurse dismisses us. Um, yeah, man, and that's pretty much been been it. The nurse will come around every now and then, check your temperature, and then um, yeah, just ordering meals every now and then, and that's it, right? That's it. You get so do knock you, on your door, do drop you drop off a meal. Hey. Like, do they bring you room service in inverted commas? And how many meals do you get a day? Is it like, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, all man. All, all I'm saying, all I'm like saying is that if some, if if someone does have COVID in this hotel, it's going to be hard to defeat it with the food you get. You know, like in the morning you get cereal, and um, well, there's there's options, but yeah, it's pretty hard, man. Like. Yeah, I've been getting like the the cereal options just because I'm not I'm I'm pretty fussy with eggs. Uh, like <laughs> I don't want to eat cold eggs, you know. Um, so <laughs> they yeah they drop off like cereal. Um, I get some fruit in the morning, uh, and then yeah, you got like an option from this paper right here. They call you every day, <laughs> yeah. and you basically just mark off what you what you can get, and then that's it. Bro. You slide it under and the door again. No, then no, then they call you in your room and you just tell them what you want and then yeah, the next day they come and knock on your door, drop the food at the door, you wait a few minutes, and then you put your mask on, walk out, get your food and walk back in the room. And that's it, bro. Sometimes see a neighbor every now and then across the corridor, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, guys aren't having sneaky corridor parties, so 
No, bro. Those are... What's the security like? Yeah, that's the thing, bro. You don't even really want to test it, you know, because uh, it's like it's um it's a pretty serious, serious um problem, and I think I think the consequences could be pretty big. Yeah, it'll be pretty um, if you do that or someone attempts it. Anyway. Yeah. So like, so yeah, I didn't even really just to try, try and no get one, I don't think it, of of what it's like there with it. Is there security on each floor? How's it being monitored? I mean, obviously you inside your room, but what did you see when you went up to your room? Did you notice anything like that? Uh, no, just a lot of security at the doors, like the main doors. Um, then there's a guy that takes you to your room, like another security guard, puts you in your room, and then that's it. Like I haven't seen another security guard. I've just seen a nurse and yeah, the the staff that drop off the food every now and then. Okay, and you mentioned seven days. So like usually they're saying the quarantine period period is fourteen days. So they yeah, so can so, seven so days. what? Yeah, so seven days. Seven days. You apparently you get tested after seven days because the virus would show up in your system then. Um, so you get tested, and then if you're negative, you're allowed to go home, and you're meant to complete the rest of the fourteen days at your house. Um. So yeah, that's pretty much the procedure. Just on my day seven is Saturday, so yeah, I still got a couple of days, and then they'll test me, and I'll take forty-eight hours to get the test results between twenty-four and forty-eight res- hours, and then I'll know if I can go home or not. Uh, and then I still got a flight. Then I got a flight to Cape Town. And flight from Cape Town? Have you managed to secure any, or is it is that being arranged it's, by SAA as well, or is it something new you need? No, to no, no. That's something I need to arrange, um, but it's just a bit hard at the moment because I don't know when I'm actually going to be released. So I don't want to book for a day too early. So it'll be one of those things where I just book the day before um, kind of thing when I know I'm going to fly out. And, and yeah, bro, the, the flights are, you are allowed to fly domestically now. So it's sweet. Other than that, I was going to just rent a car and drive down. So just still weighing up the options and see yeah. what happens. You get to see a bit of a yeah. country. Well, you got the letters, you're allowed to do cross-border stuff. So, yeah, yeah exactly. Might as well yeah. just do the whole coast and catch up and on the surfing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. I was, I was thinking about that too, but after all this time, you just yeah. want to get back home and back to your routine, you know? I think that's, that's what I miss the most, right? It's just knowing like your routine, like, yeah, just knowing where to go surf when you look at the forecast, you know, okay, there's some waves going to be over there, some waves there. Um, in Portugal, it's pretty difficult. I don't know the charts. I got the back of my hand. So I sort of just follow what I hear through the grapevines and speaking to people. So um, it's going to be good to just be able to look at the charts and know exactly what's up at home. and Just, yeah, be in my routine, see my dog again, cruise, and get back to training there. So talk about training. You are one of the fittest athletes on tour. Um, you know, are you trying to keep yourself at least a little bit of sane inside your hotel room? Yeah, um, yeah. So that's I've you? been doing. I've been doing like um, uh, like fifteen minute hit workouts, but it's pretty boring, man. Uh, I I'm I'm not really one to do like stagnant training. Um, I like to go running or doing high intense cardio, and it's really hard to get your heart rate going in a room. Um, so yeah, I've, I've sort of just been keeping busy doing some stretching, just, you know, staying, staying sane, but training hard will only commence once I get home again, man. All right. Well, man, thank you very much for your time and I really wish you all the best in your uh, final stretch of this super long journey and uh, looking forward to having you back home. Back shredding, yeah, and catching some fish, but uh, yeah, <laughs> Robert, um, 2019, the bodybuilding world champ in quarantine, and he just telling us exactly what it's like to get to this point. So, Tristan, we wish you good luck here from the Bodyboarding News Network, and we will see you soon. Thanks, my bro. I'll see you soon. <laughs>